Public health has now become a very important element of human welfare as well as sustainable global development. However, we can foresee many challenges as we move ahead. Antimicrobial resistance is rearing its ugly head, both for established infections like tuberculosis as well as rapidly growing resistance to many of the severe life-threatening bacteria. And we find that zoonotic infections, which spread from animals to humans, are becoming increasingly common, partly because we are providing a conveyor belt from deforestation, from hitherto confined viruses and vectors, to flow into veterinary populations which are captive, and then into the human habitat. We also recognize that climate change, which is already a major threat, is going to get exacerbated in terms of global warming and its adverse impact on health in very many ways. Non-communicable diseases, mental health disorders, and obesity are the new big epidemic which are now challenging the world over and is likely to reduce our life expectancy in some other countries. While we have been rejoicing that increasingly we are gaining better health and lengthening our life expectancy, we are also being told that in some countries at least, the next generation will probably have a lower life expectancy than the present one because of rapidly rising obesity. In terms of the tools that we have in order to counter these threats, we have data-driven decisions coming up with much better methods of acquiring and analyzing and applying data. And these data are now available in real time for rapid decision making and response. And big data can be sometimes problematic, but can actually give us very valuable insights into how to make public health decisions. Innovative, affordable technologies, especially tools like eHealth and mHealth and handheld tablets with decision support systems, are making it much easier for public health interventions to be administered widely, reducing access barriers, improving effectiveness, and also the ability to evaluate interventions rapidly by getting the data on effectiveness much faster, and also permitting mid-course corrections wherever necessary. A diverse public health workforce is now developing with not only public health experts, but also people in the front lines like community health workers, mid-level healthcare providers, all of them not only providing essential health services, but participating very actively in the delivery of public health programs and even in data acquisition and evaluation. Community engagement is also strengthening public health. Indeed, every person is now a member of the public health workforce by participating in the design, delivery, and evaluation of public health programs. And all of these can actually advance our public health interventions very effectively in virtually every country. In terms of the platforms, I believe strong health systems are emerging now in most countries with greater investments in a multi-layered, multi-skilled health workforce, but also ensuring that there is universal health coverage, financial protection, improving access to drugs, vaccines, and technologies, improving the health management information systems. And all of these will be very helpful in advancing public health. Health-centered development plans like the Sustainable Development Goals are now recognizing that health is absolutely essential and pivotal to economic and social development and stability and are positioning health fairly centrally in all national development plans flowing out of the SDG goals. In terms of knowledge generation, which is again vital for advancing our efforts in public health into the future, we must emphasize transdisciplinary research for multi-sectoral action. 
Already, public health has derived much of its strength by bringing in life sciences, social sciences, quantitative sciences like epidemiology, biostatistics, and demography, as well as economics, communications, management, technologies, all of them into one platform. And bringing about that kind of a transdisciplinary fusion of knowledge into effective multi-component, multi-sectoral action. But the new public health professional that we are developing, particularly in the context of global public health, has to be a T-shaped individual who will have to have transdisciplinary thinking and sensitivity to collaboration with other disciplines and at the same time develop in-depth expertise in specific domain areas either disciplinary areas or problem-solving areas where their specific application of knowledge is required. And unless this kind of a T-shaped individual emerges, we will still have siloed action, which is going to be disconnected. And therefore, even in terms of our understanding of public health and what is the science behind public health, we need to move from pure reductionist concepts to holistic constructs. Reductionism is useful in identifying some of the critical elements of what goes wrong and what can be corrected. But unless we actually put all of those together into a holistic construct, we are not likely to have effective public health results or impact. And there, we must remember that the spectrum of science is reductionist in concept, but holistic in construct. Why do I say this? A rainbow, for example, has multiple beautiful, attractive colors. That's very reductionist. But unless you fuse them together, you won't get the bright light which illuminates. That is holistic. And that is how our approach to science of public health has to be. Now, as we move further into the 21st century, we must recognize that never before in human history have we been so forewarned of the threats that await us and the potential doomed destiny if we ignore them. But never again in human history have we been so forearmed with the knowledge and tools to prevent those harms from reaching us and to advance much more safer and sounder into a healthy future.